So this week, and you'll excuse me for not looking at the camera too much because I'm just making sure that my ankles don't go down in a divot. Um, I'm obviously away, so um, I'm going to put together um, a brief, slightly unusual episode this week, which is more of a question than an answer. Um, but hopefully it will give you a bit of a test about what we're going to be up to uh, over the next coming weeks and months. Uh, a little bit of a diversion from the uh, all the laminates and composite stuff, which is probably a, a welcome reprieve for you all. Anyhow, I'll now hand over to myself in a slightly more comfortable position and I'll get on with this uh, 10k because this is slowing me down. People of the channel, greetings. Um, I'm going to try and do this in one take. What you've probably noticed is that this is not the second part of the shell lamination episode for, for Bernard. Um, that's because I'm sitting in a guest house down here in Cornwall. For those of you who are not familiar with the UK, it's down in the far southwest of the UK. Beautiful coastlines, absolutely gorgeous. And as you've just seen, I've taken over from running Alex. Uh, I thought I would just, so that I have something to post this week, because I'm not ready editing that second part of the lamination quite yet. I want to make sure it's done properly and all of my reflections are properly put in. Uh, and also I've sort of um, fell off the normal uh, weekend, normally Saturday, Sunday posting schedule, because generally once I've got an episode edited and ready, I want to get it online. There's no point sitting on it for a few days. And I generally find that engagement is actually pretty good, even if I post mid midweek. So I thought I would try and get this online now so that I'll have time to hopefully then get uh, without adding an extra three or four days to your long, um, a very patient waiting, which I guess you're all now rather used to, to doing because my my posting schedule has become a little bit uh, sporadic. I'm trying to get back onto the at least once a week schedule. Um, it means that at least you have something to get your teeth into and it's not going to be about composites because I know that we've had a real overload of that over the last few months, even though that last episode appears to have gone down rather well. Uh, what I thought I would do, instead of actually sort of telling you something, I thought in this quick chat I would ask you something. And that's because you will probably remember back in the summer, from the early summer through to the late summer, there were a couple of other Bernard-related projects, um, sort of components of the whole larger project that I was working on. Uh, the first one was regarding uh, the, the gear motor. And you, you would have seen that I had the, uh, the custom gear motor, which is a, a, a big, powerful 48 volt electric motor bolted onto a 17 to one ratio gearbox. Uh, that was sent over from China. I'm really happy with the build quality. I'm really happy with how that's gone. But I've also bought uh, the ESC, the, the controller, which is going to handle large quantities of electricity from most likely a large sodium ion battery. And that's gonna send all of that juice into our gear motor. Now I haven't really had the opportunity to get that running yet, even to test whether the whole thing works or not. The controller was actually sent directly from Kelly controllers. Some of you who are into uh, electric motors, um, small EVs, uh, e-bikes, all that sort of thing, may well be familiar with Kelly controllers because they make a lot of uh, direct-to-consumer units, uh, even for quite high power units. And um, that was actually originally sent from the manufacturer across China, and then they tested it so that when it was shipped over, they knew that it wasn't going to be a, a dud, which was, which was very good of them. That's actually why I have a lot of confidence in the people who made both the gear motor uh, and the, and the, um, uh, the gearbox. The, the component parts of the gear motor are the gearbox and the motor. Uh, but I don't know how to run it. I've got, all the, um, I've got all the paperwork, I've got the manual. The manuals and the wiring diagrams are not particularly intuitive, I have to say. And I'm looking for, first of all, an expert in these, someone who can help me translate, but do so on camera so I can try and possibly educate both myself and also other people at the same time. I've looked online and there isn't that much really in depth uh, instructional in-depth information on Kelly controllers and in particular how they interact with different sorts of electric motors. So I thought it would be a really good idea to plea out to my audience. Uh, if it's not you, maybe uh, a friend of a friend or someone that you know who works in the industry. Someone who works with small, not necessarily consumer, but perhaps small um, uh, small OEM units that go into uh, small cars, electric ATVs. There are all sorts of different industries where this might be applicable. But those of you who might be able to very fluently decode what on earth all of the different wires, the hall sensors, the um, there are all sorts of things which I'm just not familiar with. It'll be really useful if someone, uh, it'll be very, very useful if they were in the UK and I was able to travel to them or they were able to travel to me. We'll be able to basically run me through how the whole thing works so I can then more coherently and more fluently translate all of that newfound knowledge on to you guys. And hopefully my episodes will become more educational um, as a result and more useful for those who are searching through their own projects. Uh, if that's someone who is 
basically just an expert amateur, absolutely great. Um, if it's someone who works for a company that installs them, preferably not someone who works for a competing company because you might have other ideas about uh, which ones I should have bought in the first place. Anyway, anyone who has serious uh, experience with connecting ESCs to uh, sort of mid voltage, so we're talking 48, 72 volt motors and would be comfortable having a look over the Kelly controller ESC and basically working out what needs to plug into what and any little tips about how to make sure that things uh, don't break or uh, maybe components that I might want to upgrade at this point before the whole thing gets bolted together. That would be awesome. Uh, so I'm putting the word out. Um, uh, motor people, ESC people, let me know in the comments, in uh, via email, via my website and via DMs. And I should then over the next few months, probably into possibly the mid late winter, I'll be able to come up with a really useful episode, uh, which will help uh, the YouTube community as a whole. Second one, similar kind of story, something which I kind of have base knowledge of, but not a really detailed knowledge, and that is bearings. Uh, I did a, a, a couple of episodes on changing the lubrication within some small test bearings that I was looking at. And what was very clear is that although I, I understand yeah, the, uh, the foundational principles of how bearings work and about the whole family of different types of bearings and the different properties that they have and things that they can add to a project, you're not going to end up with simply one type of, um, of bearing to solve all of those problems. So again, if there is someone ideally in the UK who I might be able to run an episode with, if you're in the industry, whether you are um, a mechanic, whether you're in design, whether you are a systems engineer, all sorts of different types of people who will know much, much more about bearings, whether they are this big or this big, it'd be really cool to get in contact. And then I might be able to, again, run a really good in-depth episode for the channel where we can, do where we can delve into uh, the correct ones for the Bernard project, also for the small sledge project that I'm going to be uh, fitting them into when I'm putting my snow, my snow sledges together. That was the one that I was changing the lubrication on, on those uh, episodes not too long ago. Uh, then, yeah, we can do a really uh, comprehensive uh, vehicle um, drive shaft bearing um, overview. That'd be really useful. Um, I thought that'd be cool. Uh, I don't really have much for you in, uh, as opposed to those two questions. So it's going to be hopefully uh, some wisdom flowing from you to me. Um, is it always wisdom flowing from me to you? No, it's a two way conversation that we're having on this channel, isn't it? Although some people sometimes think that I'm trying to impart knowledge that I don't have. I'm always here to learn. That's very much the plan. Cool. That's gonna be it for this one. Uh, I think I might have managed that in one take, despite tripping over a sentence or two. Uh, we will persevere. Uh, I will probably now hand back to running Alex and it's got much darker because it was quite a long run and things were getting a little bit dim on those coastal paths. Anywho, I didn't break my ankle in the end, so that's good news. Uh, I will hand over back to him. Cheers. So, I guess we'll see how we go. Uh, maybe someone will be able to help. Maybe someone will know someone or will know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows a little bit extra about these sorts of uh, small motors and uh, in particular their ESCs and also about different types of bearings. Uh, until then, hopefully you can hear me over the rising wind. Bye.